Here we are to continue our discussion of JavaScript and object-oriented programming uh, through creating this, this breakout game and updating the breakout game code, right? Um, so far, we've got the game here, and uh, you know I've got all my code, and I've, I've broken it into classes, right? But we can do, we, this needs to be kind of refactored again. Remember when we wrote the code the first time through, it was pretty rough, and we wanted to rearrange some of the variables and um, arrange the code and rename a few things, right? And then after we did that, it was able we were able to go through and um, also update some of the code to object oriented, you know, style. And now that we've got that, you know, it's time for a refactor. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to do here is I'd like to break all of the classes out into their own files. And this is going to be a little bit awkward, but a little easier to edit, you know. And later, we'll actually put them all back together again in another way, that'll and it'll make a lot more sense, right? But for right now, let's move each class into its own file. And that'll actually make the, the linter happy, okay? So uh, I'm going to go find my um, the ball class here. And, uh, you know, I'll just select it and I'll cut it out, make a new file. And traditionally, what we do is we always name the class after the, or name the file after the class. So if, I, if this file contains the ball class, I call it ball.js. Okay. Now, now that I've made that file, my um, my code won't be able to find it, right? So what I need to do is I need to import that file here in my um, index.js or index.html. So I'll go into index.html and I'll set the source to ball.js, okay? So main is gonna be where our program is created and run. And these files up here that appear before main are like dependencies or their code that we're gonna import and use. And then main will actually make use of the code that is imported before, okay? Okay, great. So let's, uh, let's do the same with the brick class, right? So we'll cut that out of here. You'll notice the bricks class is actually dependent on, on, on brick. So we'll have to make sure that brick is imported before bricks, okay? So let's make a new file, paste that, call this brick.js, and, uh, and then we'll import it. I'm just gonna go through this really quick here. Right, and you can race ahead and, and do this right. Um, so let's get the brick class here. Make sure I get the whole thing. Uh, make a new file. Call this bricks.js. And then I'll import it over here. Now again, right here, um, since the brick class or the bricks class relies on the brick class, um, brick will have to be imported first. Okay, and or it should be right. You know, there's because uh, um, they one relies on the other, right? So uh, I'll cut this guy out of here. I'll get the paddle class, make a new file, save it, call it paddle.js. I'll import it over here. And uh, then I'll get my game label class, paste it, call it game label, import it, and uh, oh yeah, there's main. Let me move. I like having. I'm gonna have main first here, right? Oh, and there's our game class, right? So let's get the game class. Again, this game class is pretty big. I'm going to get the game class, but I'm going to leave this line here that says new game. Okay, so that's going to be the code that goes into main.js. So let's cut this out of here and then make a new file. And actually, game should, should have probably been named breakout, right? But we'll just call it game for now because that's what we used, right? And uh, we'll save that, and then we'll import it. 
and uh, I think that looks pretty good, right? So now let's go into main. Okay, great. So let's, uh, this is looking really good. Let's get rid of all these comments. Actually, you know, maybe I'll just leave the game there, right? Um, this is where we're starting the game. And then all of this stuff, well, actually, wait, these variables up here we want to save, right? Okay. So let's deal with these constants now. So a um, couple things, right? Let's get rid of all this and uh, make this like a little easier to deal with. Okay, so this is going to go into our game class, right? Now, there's a couple things. We want to look at the things here and decide like which one of these should be, you know, global variables that we keep outside of the class and which ones of these elements here um, or which of these elements should be properties that belong to game or that are configured inside the game. Okay, and some of them we want to pass into the game as parameters, right, which will go here. Okay, so that way anytime we make the game we can configure it, right? So one of those things I think is the canvas. Okay, so canvas is the name of the element in the DOM and we may want to draw the game on a canvas and the name here, the ID for it might change. So what I think would be a good strategy for us is inside the game class, let's actually put a kind of a comment in here, like a label, so that we know we're in the game class, right? And uh, what I want to do is I want to pass in the... Um, the canvas element, right? So let's say, um, let's call it canvas ID. So what you'll do is you'll pass in the ID name for the canvas. It could be the element itself, but I think we'll just pass in the ID name. So it'll just be a string. And what we'll do is we'll have these um, two variables right here will be owned by the game class because I don't think they really should be outside as global. So I'm going to cut those guys out of here. Um, I'm going to paste them into the game here. And we'll change it to uh, this.canvas and this.ctx, right? And um, this canvas ID right here will be the string that you pass in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the string out of there and I'll leave the canvas ID here and when you create an instance of the game you'll pass in the canvas ID so I went back to main.js and here is where I'm making the instance of game and what I do is I tell the game like hey why don't you draw yourself on this canvas and then the game tries to you know get an, a reference to that element and then it stores it in canvas in its you know property variable and then gets a reference to the context and it stores that in the context variable, right? So now that I've done this, um, this CTX variable is used in a couple places and we need to make sure now that it's this.ctx, right? But also remember, and this is a, a scope issue, right? Some of the functions take in the CTX as a parameter, right? But what we wanna do is we want to make sure that, that those are not this.ctx because they're getting the, the CTX as a parameter. And we want to make sure when we pass the CTX, when we call the method, that it's this.ctx. So let, let's walk through that, right? So uh, let's see what we have here. So, um, oh yeah, these variables too, ball radius and object color and stuff, we got, we're going to have to deal with those, right? But we'll do that later. So first of all, we've got this.canvas. So that's going to replace um, canvas.width right and then as i scroll down here um i got canvas.width again and canvas.height i'm actually thinking maybe we should just get these two variables and call them width and height okay let's make that like another refactor because we're kind of already on our way here and then i'll keep scrolling down oh there's another canvas.width um canvas.width canvas dot height and uh, 
Oh yeah, there's a canvas offset left, canvas width, canvas width. There's a whole bunch of these. Let's comment this out for now. And canvas width. Okay, now here where we pass in the CTX, this is going to be width or uh, this dot CTX, right? Because we need the value and we're passing the value to the function, okay? So we pass the value to the function and then inside the function, you know, when we call ball.render or actually here we'll go to game label.render, this receives this CTX as a property or I mean as a parameter and then we just use it. Okay, so um, so that's looking pretty good. Let's see if we can if we made any mistakes there. Um, oh, I got a problem here. Let's go quickly uh, in check. Go to the inspector. So I'll right click, and here in the console I can see oh unexpected end of script. So I got some problem here. I guess on game JS line one fifty three. So let's go figure that out. Probably a syntax error. Oh yeah. Maybe I left a curly brace out in the other, like when I cut, cut that out of here, maybe I missed a curly brace, right? So let's uh, let's paste that in there. Oh, can't find variable canvas, right? And remember, we just changed canvas to this dot canvas. So let's go find that in main.js, right? Oh, that's okay, right? Because in main.js, we're using the canvas here. So let's look at these variables now and fix these and then that'll take care of that problem so there's a bunch of variables here and this is kind of it's kind of ugly let's um let's actually take all of these out right so i'm in main.js i'm going to remove all of those variables and what i want to do is i want to take them into game.js and I'm going to make them part of game.js. So let me make a little space here in the constructor, right? So when we construct the game, the game has a few properties that it uses. Let's make a little space here. And we're going to use these, right? So some of these should belong to the game as properties. And um, some of them are calculated from canvas, in which case we need to get that from our, like the property that we own, like this dot canvas, right? So we've got uh, um, the ball radius. Actually, let's let's make this. Actually, maybe all these should just be this dot ball radius, paddle height, and. Uh, kind of feel like this brick width and height maybe should belong to our bricks or brick class, right? But we'll we'll just set it up here. So now these um, these will be kind of like configuration variables that we use with the class, right? So we'll just set them here. So anytime you create a new game, you can just go to the constructor and set these, right? And actually, I think I've kind of removed this object color right here, but we'll just save this right for now. And uh, this dot game over message, right? Okay, so uh, let's set these guys up here. And then for canvas width and canvas height, let's, um, let's put this dot canvas. And oh yeah, paddle height will be or paddle width will be this dot paddle width, right? And then I have a few of these to figure out, right? So I got most of them there. And then here we get ball radius, um, this dot object color, uh, this dot paddle start, you know, and I'm just gonna go through and find all of these and fix them. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's see, there's a couple more in here. Oh yeah, there's the paddle start. A 
let's see here. Oh yeah, here's the, the game over, or this is the game win message. Maybe I didn't make a variable for that. Um, that might've been a good idea. Let's see here. Um, oh yeah, here's another one, paddle Y start. So now it's just a matter of like reading all the lines. Let's check again. I probably still have another error here. Oh, can't find canvas, right? So let's go to game.js line 10. And oh yeah, I got canvas here. So this should be like this.canvas, right? Because we got it from the line before. Oh, brick width. Where's that? Bricks line 13. Okay, so yeah, so we'll need to pass these properties into the brick. Let's go check on that, right? Wait, let's go read that again. So it says bricks.js line 13. So let's go here. So we need to fix um, line 13 here, right? And let's go take a look at our brick object, right? I think I gave the bricks a width and a height. So every brick knows its width and height. So actually when the bricks object draws them, it should really just get the width and height from the brick, right? So, oh, actually, well, I guess these are the initial bricks and bricks width and height, right? So let's go and, and get those, right? So maybe, actually, maybe we'll pass those in, right? So maybe here when we do the constructor, you know, we got to get these two values in here. They have to be available to us somehow, right? So what I think I'll do is I'll say um, width and height here. And this dot height. And then I can say, um, oh yeah, and then I got padding too. Man, this is gonna be a lot of properties. I think it'll be okay though. Let's do padding and then um, offset top and offset left, right? So the bricks to position them, they have a bunch of properties, right? They've got uh, brick width, padding, offset left, and offset top, right? So there's width, height, I got width, height, padding, offset top, offset left. Actually, let's make it left and top. And then I'll say um, padding, Um, offset left offset top and um, I think that looks pretty good so now we'll replace these guys so I'll, I can say this dot width this dot padding this dot offset left this will be height. This dot uh, padding. And this one is the offset top, right? And then when we make a brick, we'll pass in those values, right? So every brick will have its own, um, own you know, width and height, right? So we'll pass them in here. You know, there's probably another way to do this. I, I just did it this way, right? Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, then we need the color. Maybe, you know, um, maybe maybe we should add. I guess we have to add a color. Let's do it. So we'll say color here. That's like a lot of properties, right? Um, right, so there, now we got the color. So... Uh, now that we've got the color here and we've we've set everything up, we've added a bunch of parameters to bricks here. I'm going to copy all these because we'll need to set them, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, game here and find where the bricks object is initialized. And that happens here. 
right? And essentially, you know, or I mean, we just not essentially just like we have to do this, right? We have to set all of these parameters, right? So we got columns, rows, width, height, padding, offset left, offset top, offset color. Now, this looks pretty ugly, right? Because we have to do all these properties in the correct order. If we mix up the rows with the width or the height and the width or the padding and the offset, then it's not going to work. So what would be kind of nice for us is if we had um, a way to name each of the properties. So one of the things you can do is you can pass in an object with the properties that you have instead of passing in the list of properties separated by commas, right? So why don't we try that strategy here? So I'm going to change this a little bit and um, let's actually write it on the next line. So this is what we started with here. And what, I, what I'm proposing is that we're going to do this. We're going to set up a new bricks. We're going to replace this thing with an object. And it's going to have a lot of options. So I'm going to, sometimes they call this an options object. A lot of JavaScript methods take an options object as a parameter, right? Rather than a list of, of parameters. I'll take all of my parameters here and I'm going to separate each one with a line so it'll be a little easier to read them, right? So these are the names. Oops, and I misspelled that one, right? So I'll put color there. And then the columns here is going to be, you know, bricks column count. And then this will be bricks row count. And then this one will be um, this dot uh, brick width, this dot brick height. This dot uh, brick uh, padding. This dot uh, what is it? Uh, offset bricks offset left, and then uh, this dot uh, bricks offset top, and then this will be the uh, this dot object color, which was kind of our color. I don't like, actually, I don't, I'm not super happy with my names there. I think I could have come up with better names. Um, what do we have there? I think that looks pretty good. I think there's a little issue with the linter is not happy. So, oops, wait, color. It likes to have that extra comma at the end. Um, and I think these are not tapped right. Yeah, what is it? Oh, index indentation of six found eight so it wants like it wants me to take out two spaces you know why because my spacing here got set to uh, four instead of two let me fix that okay there we go right um, oh yeah so now we have two of these right so I'm gonna get rid of this one right and then our last step is now that we're using an object here to store all of the parameters, there will only be one property here, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'll cut all these guys out of here and I'll say options here. And what we could do is we could say options uh, dot uh, columns, right? Because we've got you know, columns over here and rows and width, right? So we could say, how about um, options.columns, options.rows, um, bricks will just stay the same, and then we can say options.width and options.height. I'll do all these, but I even have a better way to do this, right? So we'll do options offset, options offset, right? So that looks pretty good. The um, This options dot is kind of a hassle, right? So why don't we do this? If we take the options object here and 
we say const equals options, we can put all of the property names that are contained in the options object inside these curly braces. And this syntax says to make local variables out of each of the properties with the matching names, right? And then I can get rid of options like this. And I'm kind of going back over this, so I'm trying to show how it works, right? So we can get rid of all these guys. And, and then that's kind of cleaner, right? And then we can even take this like one step further is you can deconstruct here inside the constructor. So if we, you know, here on this line, if we're saying take the options object and deconstruct it into, you know, uh, variables with these names, if we place this thing in place of the options object here that we would take as a parameter, it'll make those variables in the, um, inside the parentheses here, right? And then we can get rid of this line, okay? So that's kind of working there. Um, what is this guy? Oh, brick is not defined. It just doesn't see that it's in that other file. Well, we're gonna take care of that later too. So, um, so that looks pretty good. Let's see, what do we got here? I still got an error. Line 165, can't find variable CTX in the draw method. Let's go find that, right? So, um, so we're almost done here. Oh yeah, I missed this, right? So we'll say uh, this.ctx, let's save that. Oh man, can't find variable p2. Oh, I forgot we made that a property, right? So this is in ball.js line 19. So actually, you know that, that variable pi divided by two, that's really just used by the ball class because it draws itself as a circle. So let's cut that one out of here and actually move that into the ball class here. And then we can put this dot pi two. Oh, oh my, the mouse not move thing is still not working, but, but anyway, the game is working again. So anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry, that was kind of a long, um, long explanation there, but hopefully that's uh, helpful. Um, we've got everything arranged here. Our main just looks like this. It's simple, clean, it does one thing. We could attach the game to any canvas object now. Um, if we go to the game class, we can configure our game by setting these variables at the top in the constructor. Um, and then from there, the game builds everything else, right? And you could probably rearrange this a little bit better here. Um, and you could take this idea of the options object and move that to some of the other classes to also um, make your configuration a little bit easier and more, um, you know, organized and easier to, to read, right? So um, anyway, thanks for watching. And then in the next class, we'll maybe we'll, we'll talk about, um, you know, using inheritance.